by the way folks I don't know if you could hear it through the microphone here on my on the top of my shirt here but even when I make these these kind of relaxed looking swings my muscle tone I've got a pretty good muscle tone throughout my body I got a pretty good grip and it is swishing every time I get down I can hear it start to swish right there just at that split second before or that that just before impact look uh, point even on these these relaxed swings which I do have good, pretty good muscle tone and pretty good posture, I'm still getting a swish. There'll be a lot more now when I get ready to hit this thing and I really activate everything and hit this. Hello, Serge here from the backyard driving range. All right, you just heard my comment about feeling, hearing a swish every time. If you don't hear a swish in your practice swings, then you very likely don't have your muscles in your body engaged to really swing the club. So you should always hear a swish when you, when you, when you take your practice swing. All right, we have a question that came in from Howard Gary, and Howard says, I have been following your excellent peak performance golf swing videos for a long time, but I do have one interesting theoretical question. Hmm. All right. Many instructors advocate attempting to keep the club square to the ball throughout the swing rather than using a toe-up club position on the backswing. Logically, keeping the club square seems to make sense. What is the problem with using the square approach? Is it loss of distance, orthopedic issues? I know you have researched this. Howard Gary. Yes, Howard, I have researched it, and I have researched it with some, with some experts, both physiologically, my main one being Dr. Ed Armstrong, who you've heard his name here on, this, on this, uh, uh, these dailies many, many times. And I've, done a, I've, I've researched it with engineers and physicists and mathematicians, my main one being my mentor, Henry Rifle, who unfortunately uh, passed away about six months ago. And I have, and I've been with some other physicists and things that I got a couple in my, on, uh, in my phone that I, every now and then when, when a question like this comes up or, or I, uh, uh, thinking about something, I'll just pick up the phone and call these guys when I need an expert opinion on, on something that, that involves physics, mechanics, or whatever. Naturally, like you all know, if a question's come in on clubs, I'll tend to fire that, that question off to, to Doc to, to work his answer into mine. Uh, when I do this daily, and uh, maybe he'll even do one on it. And so I go to the experts. I'm a golf pro. I'm a pretty good one, I think, but I don't know all the things about all the other areas that come in. But I do know this. I'm one about the only golf pros that's taken, that studied the human physiology, which also includes the eyes and, and, and a few other aspects of, of, of our body that, uh, that a lot of people haven't looked into. I've taken the physiology, I've taken the physics, and married them together. The peak performance golf swing is the only one that incorporates them both, and we swing in accordance to the laws of physics, and guess what? The laws of physics were here before anything else was living and breathing. When God created the world, he created the physics, and when he created our bodies, he did not create our bodies to defy the laws of physics. We have to work in harmony with physics, so every bit we might choose to, to violate physics is only going to make the job of whatever we're doing a lot more difficult, and especially hitting a golf ball. All right? So getting back to... Getting back to this about square to square. The problem with square to square is that square to square does not, is violating your human anatomical design. All right, I'm gonna take this, 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 line, this alignment arrow and put it down here, pretty much aiming at the target, okay? Now, see I thought, that, I thought by the eye, I thought that was spot on. It was about four inches left. Right now, I can't see the camera through my shaft, so that's pretty much spot on right now. That's why when you, if you're trying to do spots, find spots for putting and chipping, you should always check with your club that your spot is where you really think it is. Because looking from here to there and out there, it's very easy to make one, two, three, four inch mistakes. All right, and as we know, I've said one inch, three feet in front of the ball, line flares or fans out ten yards every hundred yards. All right, so that's often a little bit of an alignment thing. Square to square. What square to square means is. If this is the aiming line, they want the club face coming back and kept square. All right? And many please, there's, a, there's a website out there that's talking square to square all the time. Now, that's actually its name. And they want you to keep the club square here. They're, little, they're, they're not really as flat as the rotationals, but they're, but they're not up here where we are either. They want you square. They want you coming back to your body and club square up at impact. And then you, and then you, and then you swing square coming up on this side. Now. Technically, it's anatomically impossible to swing square, totally square, because that would mean you'd have to be swinging this way to really stay square, to keep the club square to the line all the time. All right? They're trying to keep the club face perfectly square to the body, 
and, 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 the, and the line at least at this point in here. And they feel like the longer it is, in some cases they're trying to do it a foot or two around here at impact. But the problem with all of that is, is it defies your anatomical design of how your arms are connected to your body and how they're designed to move in relationship to your body when you're swinging or throwing anything. All right, your arms are connected to your shoulders at a ball and socket joint. They rotate. So I can put my hands, they only can swing in front of your body. All right, and in that ball and socket joint. So I put my hands out here. All right, I can, I can, I can rotate them opposite independently, but if I put them together, they always, ro they always move, especially with any rotation, exactly opposite each other. All right, they're diametrically opposed. So that's why it's so important to have a good grip because then they're always they're working exactly opposite each other and therefore they're working very well in tandem. All right, so if I, if I stand here, what's happening? People talk about wrist cock and wrist hinging. There's no wrist cock and hinging in a golf swing. You don't, Hank Aaron didn't hit all those home runs and all those guys that win home run derbies and everything else, they, they, they always say, look at them, they're snapping their wrists. They're not snapping their wrists, they're rotating their arms together. All right, because again, you're not going to see anybody holding a baseball bat with different grips. They both, when they hold that bat, both hands are always on. They're perpendicular to each other. All right, so that means they're going to rotate through together. They're rotating their arms, okay? The whole arm is rotating. The difference between a baseball bat and a golf club is this is a, this is a flat face and a, bat, a bat's a round face, but they're still doing it. I've got a picture, I've got a picture of a cricket player in that, the batter in that, I, I don't know if they call him the batter, but he's the guy, the guy that's got that bat, which is somewhat rounded. And, and he's at impact like this. He's right here at impact with his arms straight like that. All right? So it's rotation of the arms together. The whole thing is a unit from the fingertip all the way through the hand, the wrist, the forearm, the elbow, the upper arm, all the way to the shoulder. They rotate together, all right, when you've got a good grip, which is perpendicular to the ground. So when they rotate, the key, the key to the peak performance golf swing is we control the amount of rotation. Because if I stand here and I, and I, and I rotate this much on this side and I let the exact opposite happen on that side, what kind of shot is that going to hit with the face going from face up to face down? It's going to be one big sling and pull hook that's going to hit that. Conversely, if I rotate it the opposite way, this way, and come back and go up like that way, I'm going to hit me one big career slice. Okay? So we only control, we control the rotations. When I stand up here and I bend over, it, I've lost about 15 degrees from palms exactly perpendicular to the ground. So, but I can come in here and I can still get that club up to dead vertical. So I go in the catch's mid toe up. All right? Now, in my mind, it's toe up, but I know it's right about here because why? Once I had that, if I got that club here and I put it up here and I bend over, when I get it there, it's just short, it's about 15 degrees short of vertical. So in my mind, I, in my mind I'm thinking it's toe up, but I know it's, it's perfectly toe up, short of glop, but it's here. And if you notice, that kind of matches my spine angle. How much did I just lose? This is matching my spine angle vertical. Now this is matching my spine angle, so that should be matching there. All right, so it's matching my spine angle. I lift up, I come back, it's square at impact. I go into forward mid toe up and I come up. So we're controlling our rotations. So we're only rotating to about here. Now I could rotate all the way to there past 180 and I could rotate past 180 on that side. If I did that much rotation, <laughs> even if it's square at impact, the, the rotation is going to be so severe, it's going to start smothering the ball this way and make it hit it left or scooping the ball that way and, and, and with an open face and hitting it right as smothering it, it's got the face shutting down and aiming to the left. So we want, to, we want to make sure it comes in dead square at the ball. The ball's only on the club one half of one thousandth of a second. That's .0005, which means it's on and off the club in probably no more than about a half inch, three quarters of an inch movement. All the bad things you can put on a golf ball, as well as all the good things you can put in a golf ball, are happening just about fat, as fast or less than the snap of a finger. One half inch on average down there, all right? But that, and that one half inch, that club better be square, and that's all it needs to be square. This talk about a club having to come in square to the line, a foot or more back, and a foot or more through. If you do that, you're, you're, just, you're just here pushing the ball, pushing the club through. It's only about that long it has to be. So we control our rotations. So square to square doesn't work. First off, it defies your anatomical design. It defies the laws of physics of, 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 of acceleration through the swing because more acceleration comes from the hands rotating over together and, and, having, that, and having that snap and impact is, is the rotation where the hands always come back to perpendicular to the ground at impact and, and, I, and I control that. 
All right, so we are controlling our rotations by intermittent up the tree and intermittent up the tree. Square to square does not work. It violates your anatomical design in swinging, an ob in swinging a golf club or a baseball bat or anything, trying to hit it and swing it with, with good control, good force, good energy to hit an object basically as far as we can hit it with, with the club we're using. Okay, hopefully this answers your question because, again, as, as I've stated many times, I've studied with the expert. I'm the only one that's taken the physics, the physiology, and marrying them together. Square to square. It can work, but as much as they're saying that it's anatomically better for you, it is not when you're going this way and this way because this is actually rotating the, your, your joints and your muscles and, 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 your, and your arms the wrong way, and that's going to put more stress on them. Your arms are designed to move just like this. Thumbs up to thumbs up, thumbs up, comes down, which would be thumbs out right straight at the target in there. In the mitten up the tree, in the mitten up the tree, and your thumbs will be square to the target, which means your club face will be square and you hit it solid and straight, hit better shots, shoot those lower scores. Okay, well that's it for the search today on having the correct amount of perfect rotation in the golf swing, which is the limited rotation that we have in the mitten up the tree, to hit those better shots so you can shoot those lower scores. That's it for today, and I'll be talking with you all again soon.